Okay, well, I am here with Danielle Best for my interview to kind of learn a little bit about your work with Belfair. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah, of course. So, um, just to learn a little bit about um, your position, how long have you been working with Belfair? I've been working for Belfair since 2015, so about two years now. Okay, so a good amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, what education or preparation did you need to pursue this position with Belfair? So in order to, my position is a case manager, um, staff supervisor of a residential facility. So I needed a background in mental health or autism um, and also a master's degree level. Um, and then just experience working with um, kids with autism, with dual diagnosis, and also working with staff and implementing different plans and, um, and goals for the kids. That's kind of interesting because I'm also taking an autism spectrum disorder class right now, oh, and cool. then it matches well with like social work and all of that, so oh, it's kind nice. of interesting to see that overlap. Um, so what drew you to get involved with Belfair? What made you want to apply there? With Belfair? So... I have a background in autism um, at, a day, at a day program with kids with strictly autism, not really like dual diagnosis. So I heard that Belfair had like a hundred different um, programs within the company that have like foster care, that have um, social work, and like a, a really good autism school. So I like the company for that um, just because I feel like I could grow if I get bored of working with the kids with, in the residential. Um, so I like that aspect. They're actually building a hospital, um, and I have a background in healthcare administration. So I just think they just have like a, it's just, they're like growing, and they've been there for years. Um, and I love working with kids with autism. So now I'm learning more about the diagnosis of like mental disabilities. Yeah. So we have like bipolar, um, just different diagnosis. So it's just it's every day I'm learning um, about the kids, and, and it's cool. That sounds really great. Mm -hmm. um, so how would you say this organization has impacted your life? I would say the biggest thing that has impacted me working there is when a kid's discharge. Because we get the worst of the worst kids. There's only two other programs like us in the whole United States that has residential and school there. Um, so my biggest thing, my biggest role as a case manager is to see them grow, to discharge them to a less restrictive environment because we're very restrictive. We have locked doors. Um, you know, we, they visit their parents. Some parents are not in their life. Um, so just seeing them discharge to a less restrictive environment because this literally is like their last chance. So like just seeing them grow. We have kids that's been there for like eight years and then finally they're able to discharge um, and go to a group home and just really be able to live like independent life as opposed to, you know, they came there with several behaviors, um, several trauma backgrounds. So just like working with them about trauma and just seeing them grow. And I think that's the most important thing in my job is just seeing them transition to a less restrictive environment so they could live an independent life. Definitely. Um, so, um, what qualifications and work experience do you um, look for in employees and anyone who may volunteer for your organization? It's a very fast-paced um, environment. It's very hectic. It's very um, draining on your body. So I like to see someone that's just more so like passionate about learning. You don't really have to have experience working with kids with autism. But I think if you're passionate about learning, you're a team player, um, it's good to have a background in autism, but that's something that we, like, we have an extensive training program. Um, so I really look for someone that's just, they're not afraid to kind of get their, their let their guards down, because you literally get hit, kicked, bit, spit on. Um, so someone that's comfortable with that, because that's the biggest thing. Someone that has more self-control, because it's hard getting hit and kicked and, um, daily. So someone that's more so like passionate about learning and, and has an interest in working with kids with dual diagnosis, with autism and mental disabilities. Sounds very challenging. Yes. So um, how many employees or um, volunteers do you have at Belfair roughly? 
Um, to run a shift, we typically need about six to seven staff. Mm -hmm. Right now we're low on staff, so we're running shifts with five um, staff, the supervisor on the floor. Um, but in the a perfect row, it would be seven staff and a supervisor. Okay. That would be the flow. So um, what services do you offer the community through your organization? Um, you've mentioned a couple about um, helping those with autism, but what other services might be? So they have, so they're able or eligible to um, have a therapist. So they have um, a therapist that's involved working with their trauma that they meet with either two times a week or daily. Um, we also have community exposure, so getting the kids out and integrated in, into the community. So we go on outings. Um, we do independent living skills, so they are going to a laundry mag, doing laundry, um, sitting in a restaurant, working on their their skills to be able to um, behave in the community appropriately. Um, some kids have jobs where they're working at Old Navy, and they're you know, storing and stocking the um, clothes. Um, we also have family therapy, so if there's been any trauma within the family, working, that's the biggest thing, is working with um, the family on how to work with their kid. And it's hard to, like, to teach a parent how to work with their kid, but it's like, we use um, therapeutic approaches, so, like, supporting parents with visuals, supporting them with tools that they need to de-escalate their child when they're upset, um, helping them to use their words. The biggest thing working with kids with autism, um, they have limited verbiage. So the biggest thing that we learned working at Belfair is like teaching them how to appropriately communicate. Because <clears throat> that's the number one thing that they struggle with is just communicating their needs and their wants. And that's why they hit you. Cause it, they may be hungry, but they're not able to tell you, hey, I want some chips. So yeah. their biggest thing and what they learned throughout the years is hitting um, to get what they want. So just really trying to like tackle that and support the parents and learning like how to support their kid when they're hungry or they're upset and how to appropriately um, respond when they're upset as opposed to hitting and aggressing towards yeah. It's crazy because that's an extra layer to parenting. It adds that right. extra challenge. Right, and it's tough because, I mean, you know, the kid could be 20 years old and the parents been work, they're, they've been in their kid's life for 20 years and now you have a stranger coming in and telling you, you know, pretty much how to take care of your kids. So that's a challenge in itself, you know, working with the parents and, and things like that. So it's, it's, it's tough and it's challenging, but we have a, a really good... Um, system and our motto is, you know, like I said, just teaching the kid how to properly communicate. So, whether that's adaptive equipment or you know visual supports. Um, so. Awesome. So, um, what have you? You had um, a very extensive educational background coming into this position, but um, what have you had to learn since um, working with Belfair? I think the biggest thing I had to learn was working with um, the diagnosis. Um, there's an, I had a really good background working with kids with autism or adults with autism, but the diagnosis is something that is another layer that I never tapped in, so I'm really learning like um, the medications and the diagnosis and what, how the medications support you know, their um, behaviors. So I would say the biggest thing that I've learned is working with our psychiatrists on different medication to help them decrease their behaviors or help them, um, you know, we have some kids that has like psychosis and they like hear things. So like working on like knowing the difference with autism or their actual diagnosis. Yeah. So. That's an interesting thought. I would have never like considered, you know, right. that autism would, um, be paired with something else, but that definitely adds a different layer yeah, to really, it. Yeah, really, it's, it's tough to know the difference because you know autism. It's just it's a, it's on it's like a, a broad mm -hmm. diagnosis, um, and they kind of like diagnose everyone with autism, especially coming at Belfair because you have to have autism um, plus another diagnosis. So it's it's it's, it's difficult to and challenging to kind of work with them and and really, like, get the tools to help support them. 
in those moments. Yeah. Um, so you've mentioned that um, it can be challenging to um, work with them because they do get very physical and mm-hmm. um, aggressive that way. Um, would you consider that your biggest challenge or what other big challenges have you faced? I would say, yeah, their behaviors are challenging. Um, and knowing, We have some kids that's unpredictable. So, you you know, it's hard to like, gauge you know, when they're upset and it's hard to figure out ways to like be proactive to prevent them from, you know, engaging in behaviors or sometimes it's just internal thoughts that they have and, you know, one minute they're happy and then one minute they're they're smiling but they're hitting you. So it's just like the challenging part is like trying to figure out with a nonverbal kid, like how to de escalate them or how how to support their needs. Right. Um so you guys have a very proactive mission statement at Belfair. Um, but would you say that um, beyond that, um, you have a different vision for the work you do, something that personally motivates you in your work with I your think clients? the biggest thing that motivates me is working with the parents um, and as well as the kids. But I think what we, what we can work on with Belfair is like supporting the parents because um, we get kids from California, we get kids from Pennsylvania, Chicago, and the biggest thing, challenge we have with the parents is their kid is so far away and they're so used to them being around them 24 hours. So it's like they need support as well as the kids. Um, so I think they need like a, a parent group with the parents that's, you know, that has the kids in that environment so they can feel like supported and they feel more comfortable because we struggle with you know, parents not knowing what's going on, and then they hear something terrible happen, and they just need more support on, like, what what Belfair is and, like, what we offer. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so how do you identify um, who you help? Like, how do people mm-hmm. get referred to Belfair? How do they become eligible? Um, as far to, as the clients? Yeah, to receive your services. Um... Well, one, they have to have be in a crisis. Um, so whether they're not able to go to school because of their behaviors um, or they're just non-manageable in the home environment where parents are pretty much afraid of the kid. And, um, you know, so they have to be, like, in a high crisis. There's, like, there's like a big waiting list. Um, and that's the side that I don't really know because I'm literally I just get the kid and read up information about them and then once they get once they're already um went through the intake process then I kind of just start working with them so I don't really know like the ins and outs of like what it takes um to get them inside because that's like with county and that's like a whole nother um place but I just know my director she goes and she like observes different kids um, in the school setting or in the home setting. Um, and then they kind of do like the intake process. So they interview like the parents and see if they're appropriate and fit for welfare. Okay. Um, so what kind of training do you have for people who are joining Belfair? So we have an extensive two weeks training. The first week is more so the ins and outs of the business. Um, them um, being supported with CPR, um, them knowing the the goals for Belfair so they kind of know more of the background. That's like a two-day process. Um, they have to do, they have to get a fingerprint just for them to get hired. Um, and then we have an entire week that's reserved for um, working with um, a therapeutic support approach to working with the kids so they learn like how to de-escalate the kids therapeutically before we do restraints Mm because our last thing is not to restrain them so we want to work on different um, interventions and things that we could do to de-escalate them and every kid has an individualized crisis plan so like a a plan so that when they're in crisis this is what you do Um, so the staff they learn that and then there's two days of training of TCI, which is the restraint that we use. Um, so they do that, and then they do, um, they come onto the unit and they do shadowing for 
a whole month. <laughs> so the first two weeks is just, you know, we provide them, like, information about autism. Um, they have to shadow a, a staff that's been there for a while, and they kind of just follow them everywhere to learn, like, the ins and outs, like, how to learn the kids. There's a binder that we support them with about um, tricks and tips about the kids. And they have a list of their diagnosis, their medication, and things like that. Their background, their parent background. And then they actually, the staff turns around, they shout out the new staff on working with the kids. And then the last two weeks, they're just going forward and they're working with the kids without a staff being near them. Of course, it's, it's a team, so if they have any questions, then they're able to ask. Um, so it takes like a whole month to pretty much train and get the the new staff implemented into the program. It seems very thorough, so yes. you guys have very um, qualified yes. people it's, who work with you, mm -hmm. which is really important in that type of um, role because you have to be able to depend on your teammates right. in that environment. For sure. Um, so who would you consider your role model in this type of work? Um, I would say um, we have a new director, and she, I would say I'm getting learning a lot from her, um, so I would say she's my role model, only because she, like, she's been more so on the supervisory aspects of it, just like working with um, staff, because that's another story in, in itself of how to work with the staff, how to train them, um, so I would say just like her experience and her skills. Um, I'm learning and gaining a lot of knowledge behind her, um, so I would say she's my role model for right now. I think that's like the biggest thing that I like look forward to in being a mm -hmm. social work major is that you'll always have a supervisor, you'll always have someone that right. is right there with you because you can't, right. in this type of work, you can't always expect what's going to come at you. Right, so. especially working with, with human services, you know, just... You have to gain that relationship with them, and it's, you're always learning. And there's so many different avenues you have to um, address with the parents, you know, with with the the kids' workers, so their psychiatrists and their therapists, and then working with the actual kid and staff and training them. So yeah. it's very challenging. And the biggest thing is just working well as a team. Yeah, it's definitely not an individual job position. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what would you say that you love about your position, and what is your personal message about your organization? What I love about working in my position, I feel like I have 12 kids, because um, we have a, the facility, it's a 12-bed facility, um, but I love just, I love the challenge of, you know, working with kids that are very behavioral. Um, I love to see them grow. I always talk about we had a kid that he literally was in 30 restraints for a month. Then the next month it was like 35. And then as time went on and years went on, literally he hasn't been in a restraint for like three months. Or it'll be like one restraint in three months. So like just seeing that and seeing them grow, I always train my staff and let them know like it's hard you're gonna get hit and kicked but I think you know thinking about like the big picture the big picture is you know every day I'm teaching these kids how to be independent I'm teaching them you know and every moment is, is a teaching moment so that's I think the biggest thing and the, the what I love about it is just like seeing the kids grow and seeing them go you know, to the next level, where whether it's a group home or back to their parents, um, and working with and seeing the parents grow. You know, we came in with um, parents that they were afraid to be with their kid alone, and just like strengthening their um, their role as a parent and strengthening their confidence. Now have parents that they're able to go on a five-hour community outing with their kid when it, they literally can be alone with them for a minute. They will literally lock them in the room and be afraid of them. So just seeing that and seeing the, the, the clients and the parents grow overall and being able to um, transition into another environment to have a successful life, I think that's 
the biggest thing that I enjoy about it. I feel like that would be an amazing process. Right. To- and it's a lot, like, literally it takes like five years sometimes, three years to see a little change. Mm-hmm. But that little change is what I hold on to and and that's what I kind of, you know, integrate in our environment and, and that's what I try to teach the staff, like just, just holding on to that. Yeah, I'm guessing that's the best advice that you could give right. is that like it would be hard and you may not see progress for a while, but you have mm-hmm. to trust the process and know that what you're doing is yep. for the better and that eventually you'll see something, whether it's big changes or little changes. Right. And that's in life in, in general. And, you know, I take that aspect in every in my everyday life. So, um, so um, is there a particular story or um, client that you has particularly moved you or affected you emotionally and personally that like you bring with you today? I could just I always talk about the client that I have. I literally had thirty restraints in one month and thirty five for like a whole year, um, and I was like so afraid of him. It was a, a one point like he had to only live in his room and. He, was, he wasn't able to go out into the floor with all the rest of the kids because he would get overstimulated and he would want to seek out attention um, because he came from a family that had, he had eight siblings and he always had to fight for attention. And he, the way he learned to fight for attention is by being aggressive because once he's aggressive and he's attacking his siblings, then all the attention's on him. So we had to teach him in our environment. Um, working and helping him like in in a less stimulating environment so he had to work in his room by himself and then he would earn working um with the rest of the kids and he he learned you know he had to use his words and his behaviors drastically decreased and like really building a relationship with him and not being afraid um like he kicked me several times spit on me you know urinated on me purposely um, but now, like, I could literally take him out in the community by myself, and he has no behaviors, and he was able to discharge to a group home with fewer kids, and he's, he's doing great, like, he's, he hasn't had a behavior in years, um, and I think that's what I continue to hold on to, and he's, he was placed in Belfair since, like, 2013, and 2014, he was able to just, 2000. 14, yes. He was able to discharge into a group home, and his parents are able to go and visit, and he's able to hang out with his siblings without being aggressive. He had a birthday party with all his siblings. He got a little silly, but he, you know, he just needs reminders of, you know, what do I do? Take deep breaths when I get overstimulated and things like that. So I love seeing him grow, and sometimes he, you know, will have a behavior, but then he's able to use the skills and use, um, his coping skills to kind of continue to de-escalate and, and then move on. <laughs> That's amazing. Right. Um, so with such a um, emotionally um, mm-hmm. draining and demanding um, position, how do you balance your work with your personal life? Um, when I'm at home, I it's that's it. I don't talk about work. Um, I don't and look at my emails. So I just, if I'm at work, I'm at work, you know, and I'm in tune to what I'm doing at work, and I really think about, you know, my personal life, but when I'm at home, it's, that's, that's it. Like, it's just me and my family. Um, and then getting, I think I teach my staff is, like, self-care. So my self-care is going, you know, whether it's going to the gym, um, you know, going to the movies, like, I really take care of myself, whether I'm, like, going to go get my hair done, um, so I, my biggest thing is just self-care and saving time for myself and for family, and that's it, and that's all that matters, and then once I'm at work, you know, being, um, that just helps me kind of get re-energized for work and for my work week. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing that they'll preach in our social work classes is that, you know, your work is very important, but self-care is just as important because right. you are a very important person to a lot of people, so right. you have to maintain yourself as well. Mm-hmm. As if your job wasn't hard enough already. <laughs> exactly. 
Um, so how do you um, manage, as a supervisor, you'll um, encounter a lot of people with a lot of different personalities in your work, mm -hmm. um, not only the employees, but also the clients that you work with. How do you manage and navigate those different personalities that may conflict? Um, the biggest thing my director taught me is like sticking <clears throat> with the facts. Um, so if there is a conflict, if someone's wrong, just sticking with the facts and not um, inter reacting emotionally. So keeping my emotions out of it. Um, and that's what I like go to. Like, so if there was a, a problem that we encountered, the fact is that you're wrong. Um, and then how, how can we move on to, from it? Or, you know, the biggest thing, just like not thinking emotionally and not inter not reacting overly emotional so I think the best thing like working with different people is just sticking with the facts um, and sticking with the goal that we have which is the clients um, so sticking with you know what's best for them in every situation definitely and that's a good thing not only just mm -hmm. um, applies to that line of work but it's definitely something to take with you right. in every yeah. situation yeah. a lot of times our gut reaction when we face challenges mm -hmm. is to react with our emotions right. rather than but that's good advice yeah um so i've asked you a lot of questions <laughs> but is there anything that um you immediately think to talk about that i didn't ask you um that i should have asked you um, it's a trick question it is a trick question <laughs> Um, I don't know. <laughs> I know, because you've talked a lot about um, your work, but I feel like I feel like we talked a lot about um, all the different components, but... Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing I would say is the amount of services that we have and the teamwork that we have. Like, we... So the school is literally 15 steps away from where all the clients live. Um, so we worked and we collab and we're very cohesive part. So we, all those different programs were all have one goal, which is serving the client. Um, so we have like meetings with the teachers about like what works in their environment, what works in our environment. And we sometimes we make changes like, okay, well this works for you guys. We'll do the same thing in residential. Um, so I think that's one good thing about it is that their school is like right there um, and we're able to kind of be more of a cohesive environment as opposed to like separate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I think that is all I have for you today. So unless you have anything else you'd like to add, um, thank you very much for taking your time to speak with me today. Yeah, of course. And... You know, Belfair, like I said, we are low on staff, so if anybody needs a job, Belfair is the right company for you. Awesome. Thank you very much.